Hey, hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about what is the purpose of buying real estate. Of course, it's pretty straightforward for a lot of people. The purpose of buying real estate is either to stay or to invest. But I find that there is one important purpose that is often overlooked by a lot of people. Okay, so let me try to illustrate this important purpose using a case study. Give me a moment, yeah, let me share my screen. Okay, here. So the purpose, this important purpose, let me illustrate down here. So this is especially true for those uh, upgraders from either from HDB thinking of upgrading to a private EC or from EC upgrading. As long as you are considering this set progression journey, I think this purpose will be important. Okay, so this scenario, oh, sorry. Wait up. Yeah, so this scenario we have over here is this young family, husband, wife, and a small kid. So husband, it will be 35, wife, 35, and a kid is three years old. Okay, so now in this year 2020, this small family, they own a four-room HDB in Congo. Okay, and they have just... um meet their five years MOP, five years MOP, and they are thinking whether should they upgrade to a private or should they continue holding this uh, this flat. Lah. Because a lot of times people are in this situation. I think when I spoke to them, the husband was pretty keen to upgrade, but the wife was a bit held back because she, I mean, her thinking is they don't really need the swimming pool, they don't really need the gym because their kids are the kid is still very young, three years old. So all these facilities they don't need at this point in time. What for upgrading to a private and you pay the monthly maintenance fee? Okay, this is what I share with them. Okay, so looking at the situation, right? We will begin with the end in mind. So okay, I will ask them. In 30 years' time, where do you see yourself in? Okay, for sure, this is certain. In 30 years' time, the husband will be age 65, the wife will be age 65, and the kid will be 33 years old by then. Okay, so at the age of 65, right, what will happen to them? Think about it when you are 65. What is the stage that you are going through? So at the age of 65, right, am I right to say that they have this option to retire? This option to retire. Retire also need option. Ah, because you need to have this option to either retire early, retire at 65, or retire later. I'm sure you have seen uh, quite a lot of people without this option to retire meaning that um, either they did not plan for retirement or financially not enough to retire. That's why they don't have this option means that they have to work beyond retirement. Okay, so if you want this option to retire, right? And the next question is, how much retirement fund do you think you need to sustain your, your retirement? Because Life expectancy in Singapore is around like 83 to 85 years old. So if you were to retire at the age of 65, right, which means that uh, if it's until 85, means that you've got around 20 years. I mean, this retirement fund needs to sustain for the next 20 years. Do you have this fund in place or not? Because without this retirement fund, I mean, who is going to suffer? Ultimately, you are the one who is going to suffer. And... um likely your family, I mean, you will become a, a bit of a burden to your family because your kid who is like 33 years old having just started his own family will have to chip in to um, take care of you to sustain your retirement. But how much retirement fund is required? Okay, let us take a look here. So 
I have checked with, I mean, most of my clients, they still want to maintain a bare minimum kind of lifestyle, like travel once a while, can still go to a restaurant once in a while. And the majority of them are giving this um, amount of $2,000 per month. Of course, for you, you can choose to have a lower amount or a higher amount depending on your lifestyle. But for this illustration, we just take a look at $2,000, which is, I think, pretty reasonable. Okay, so $2,000, okay. If it times one year and 20 years, it will come up to around 480,000, 480,000 uh, for the 20 years. So if it's for the two of you, then most likely it will be close to $1 million. Of course, once again, it depends on your, the, the, the lifestyle that you want. Lah. Okay. So for this illustration, we take a look at the $1 million. So $1 million retirement, of course, we will need other vehicles like investment, like your insurance to help you get to this amount. Okay. So for here, right, at the age of 65, if let's say they were thinking that their property is a bit too big already because their, their child has grown up and moved out already, they can consider to downgrade their four-room HDB to a, perhaps a three-room one to cash out for your retirement sum. So now let us take a look at it. Huh? So currently, it, back to the year 2020, which is now, their flat is valued at 500000 so what do you think will be the amount at the year uh, 2050, 30 years from now? Let us take a look. I mean, for a lot of you, maybe you will have an idea already, but for those who don't, right, we look at this uh, market analysis, okay? For HDB, we look at the price movement for the last 15 years, here, last 15 years. And here I just um, select everything. I didn't specific, uh, specifically select any area or any size because I just want to let you see the whole picture. Okay, so you can see the HDB prices has been going up until uh, the year 2013. This is the part where the government introduced uh, the mortgage, uh, mortgage servicing ratio, MSR. And they also ramp up the BTO supply in the primary market. So with the primary market boosted up, the impact is secondary market goes down. Lah. So secondary market stabilized from there. And if you were to see from the year 2014 to now, the market is at overall zero, minus 0 0.77. But from the graph, I can see that it's pretty stable, lah, which is, I think, what HDB wants because they want to provide affordable housing for all Singaporeans. So it's really not their intention to have HDB goes up very high, I assume. So I think reasonable if I just put as 500k because it's stable, lah, stagnant. Lah. Huh? Okay, so if it's like 500,000 in 2050, right? and if they were to cash out to a like three room, Three room HDB, which cost maybe three hundred thousand or maybe two hundred fifty thousand. So five hundred minus two fifty, they will have two hundred fifty k for retirement. Like this is the amount of money they have saved up in their house over this thirty years period. Okay, is it enough? Um, falling short. Of course, if they have the insurance and investment, they can perhaps have like seven hundred and fifty dollars elsewhere to top up to this one million. Okay, but let's look at another scenario. If they were to upgrade in the year 2020, which is now, to let's say a $1 million EC or condo. Okay, if they were to upgrade to a $1 million EC or condo. At the end of 30 years, right, because the loan tenure 30 years, so by 30 years time, they will have fully paid for this particular EC or condo already. So how much do you think will this EC or condo um, be worth or be valued at, at the end of the years? So I'm sure you will have some idea, but let's go back to the market analysis. If we were 
to go to um, private here. Okay, I changed to private as my cursor. I changed to private. Same thing for the last 15 years and same thing I didn't choose any district because I just want to have a broader perspective of the whole market. You can see that private market has been going up. Okay, so I mean, just not to drill one for you see, right, HDB market has been stagnant. So in here, right, what if the HDB owner were to upgrade to private? The currently the profit they are sitting on is quite substantial. Okay, so, okay, let's go back. So I can safely assume that, I mean, if in the same kind of scenario, the $1 million condo uh, right now is still 1 million in 2050, I think it's pretty reasonable and pretty safe to say that. Okay, so with this $1 million fully paid, let me ask you, can they buy back the 500K HDB for retirement and have 500K in retirement? Uh, retirement sum or can they still buy back the 250k three room flat and have like 750k thing i mean for me i will choose the 750k like definitely oh, so this is the point i'm trying to illustrate so this purpose right is actually what we call Cost savings. Cost savings for retirement. Because the money you put inside here are all save are all your cost savings. So the next time you can cash out to retirement uh, to retire. Of course, um, some people will be a bit concerned because here, right? The monthly installment will be around like thousand three to thousand five there about per month. Lah. And if you were to upgrade to one million dollars over 30 years, it should be around 2770 per month. Oh, so from one three to one five to two seven seventy is a bit of a jump. Of course, if it's comfortable for you, it will be good, but for a lot of people it may i mean they have to give some sacrifices like maybe if you travel yearly to europe or usa you may have to come back a bit like one year ago europe one year ago somewhere near in asian countries like japan korea or if you were to like dine every few days in restaurants then maybe you have to come back one less good meal um every week but then at the end of the day what is important is whether this 250,000 or 750,000, which one do you want for your retirement? Oh, I think this is the end state that we want for this cost saving. So we realized that for this upgrading, I didn't say about any upgraded lifestyle, whether you have facilities and all that, because I think all these are secondary. The primary purpose is really this cost saving. And I have been telling my clients and friends that hey, don't be afraid to own bigger properties when you are younger because based on this um, scenario, you will see that if, let's say, it's, you can afford a 2 million condo, I mean, you have to work harder, definitely. But at the end of the day, in 30 years' time, this will still be 2 million condo. I mean, it can be higher, but worst case scenario, I think it will still be 2 million and your retirement sum will be much higher, 1.75 million. So ultimately, my friend, this is what you want at the end of the day but important thing is you have to plan a hit you have to plan a hit so that you can reach this um amount okay so this is the generic sharing that i do with um my clients of course after this right it's important that we do a customized plan and incorporate what we call risk analysis especially in this uh, very volatile times like Okay, because this is really very generic. The numbers are not customized um, to your situation. So I will do a customized plan with risk analysis. And of course, moving forward, a lot of people will ask, hey, look, so how do I determine, uh, how do I determine like which are the 
are undervalued properties to buy, which are the developments that is safe to enter in, or if those who have already shortlisted the development of their choice, right? What are the units to select to maximize their profit uh, gains? Because you would have seen that um, even in the same development, some owners make quite a lot and some owners only make a little. Why is that so? Unit selection really plays an important part in your profit and I can really show you through statistics. Why is that so? Okay, so I mean, hope uh, you have a good takeaway from this sharing, today's sharing. Okay, if there's any questions, feel free to uh, reach out to me. Okay, if nothing, then I'll see you again. Bye-bye.